The aqua regia process dates back over a thousand years, and has traditionally used nitric and hydrochloric acids, as well as toxic and corrosive precipitants. Shore R&D has developed non-toxic, effective substitutes for both nitric acid and the precipitant. These safe substitutes, MX3 and quadratic precipitant, are utilized in this kit. Just follow these simple video instructions and you will refine your gold to 99.95% with no losses, even the first time you use this process. The AR2G refining system is very comprehensive and includes all the equipment you will need to refine your gold to 99.95% purity. Components include workstation with spot plate, ammonia detection liquid, and precious metal test liquid, pipette, and stirring rod, digital hot plate, beaker with basket, filter pouch, cap, thermometer, and quick connect, scrubber with treated, activated charcoal, urea, quadratic precipitant, and a mix 3 concentrate, measuring cup, dry pour beaker, and cover, and lastly, electronic scale, gold rings not included. You'll also need a couple of items not supplied with the system. Muriatic acid, water, and household ammonia. Refining in aqua regia is a simple and easy procedure, but like anything new, it can be a little intimidating, especially since you are working with gold. Don't worry. Even if you screw up massively, the only way to lose your gold is to literally Throw it away. Just take your time, follow the instructions, and you'll do fine. And if you have any questions, just contact Tech Support. They will be happy to help you. And, unlike me, they are actual, real people. The process is pretty simple and straightforward, with just a few easy steps. Metal is dissolved into solution. Stones, and other materials that didn't dissolve, are separated from the solution, by removing the basket, and filter pouch. Free nitrogen ions that are in solution are neutralized by the addition of urea. A selective precipitant is added to the solution to turn the dissolved gold, and nothing else, back into solid in the form of particles. The solution is then decanted to recover the gold mud. The mud is dried and then melted. 100% recovery with zero losses is typical and typical purity is at least 99.95%. The ER2G refining system will refine up to 3 ounces of metal per batch. Stones don't count. The first step is to weigh your metal. This weight will determine the quantities of chemicals required to refine it. Add your gold to the basket. Weigh an equal weight of MX3. And then add the MX3 to the basket. The last ingredient is hydrochloric acid. This is also called muriatic acid. The proper concentration is about 15%. So if your acid is around 30%, just add an equal volume of tap water to bring the strength down to about 15%. Take the beaker to a well-ventilated area, preferably out of doors. Add 120 milliliters of hydrochloric acid for each ounce of metal. Replace the cap and bring back indoors. Connect the quick connects. The fumes will now pass through the scrubber, removing both their smell and corrosion. Plug to the hot plate into a convenient outlet. Press the on button to turn the unit on.
Then press the 176 button to set the temperature. The time required to dissolve your metal will vary, depending largely upon the surface area of your metal, and the silver content. Typical dissolving time is around one half hour to one hour. However, the time can increase significantly when refining items that are thick, and have a high silver content. When all the metal has dissolved, it's time to separate undissolved materials, like diamonds for example, from the solution. And after that, we'll recover the purified gold. So let's disconnect the scrubber, and take the beaker to a well-ventilated area, preferably outside. Remove the cap. Slowly, lift out the basket with filter pouch, allowing the aster to drain. You can rest the basket in the tripod beaker, or any other plastic or glass container. Add a pinch of urea. If your ratios of metal, acid, and MX3 were correct, there will be no reaction. However, if the urea fizzes, then slowly, add more, until there is no reaction. We are ready now, to convert the dissolved gold, into gold particles. Add one ounce of quadratic for every ounce of dissolved metal. Replace the cap. And bring the beaker back inside. Reconnecting it, to the scrubber. Typical precipitation time is about one to two hours. But if it's more convenient to leave it longer, that's fine. The hot plate will automatically turn off if left running for a long period of time. No worries, just tap the on button to restore heat. So, how will we know when precipitation is finished? The precious metal detection test will tell us. This test is both highly effective, as well as easy to run. Using the pipette, let's take a sample of the solution, and test for the presence of dissolved gold. Place a drop or two, on the spot plate. Now, add a drop or two of precious metal test liquid. If any gold remains dissolved in the acid, the color will rapidly turn purple, or black. When the test yields no color change, then no gold remains dissolved in solution, and precipitation is complete. You can run this test as often as you like. Just be sure to clean the pipette, inside and out, between tests. Cleaning ensures, that you don't get a false positive. This test is sensitive to within 4 parts of precious metal, per million parts of solution. And it will also detect dissolved platinum group metals. Different color changes, for different precious metals. Now that all the gold has precipitated, it's time to decant the acid, and recover the highly purified gold powder. Turn off the hot plate, and bring the beaker outdoors, or a well-ventilated area. And then remove the cap. Decant the solution into the dry pour beaker, or any other plastic or glass container. Being careful not to pour off particles of gold with the solution. If you used the recommended chemical ratios, then the particles should be quite heavy, and remain in the bottom of the beaker, while you pour off the solution. But, just to be certain, we will save that solution for a little while, just to see if any particles settle out. Let's give the gold mud a thorough rinsing now. Any acid clinging to the mud will have dissolved metals in it. So a thorough rinse is essential. The first rinse is with ammonia. You don't need much, and regular household ammonia is fine. Add enough ammonia to cover your mud. Let the gold particles settle, and then decant the ammonia, being careful not to pour off particles with the ammonia. Save the solution, so that you can check it later 
for particles. Fill the beaker with water. Tap water is fine. If you would like, you can give the water a stir. Then give the gold particles a chance to settle. Decant the water, saving it to check later, for gold particles. We'll want to rinse one more time with water, before checking to make certain that the gold has been thoroughly rinsed. The test for impurities, is very similar to the test for dissolved gold. And it has a similar degree of sensitivity, 4 parts impurities per million parts of solution. This test however, uses aqua ammonia test solution. Tilt your beaker so that the small amount of water, clinging to the mud, rolls down, to form a small puddle, in the corner of the beaker. Using the pipette, take a sample of the water, and place a drop or two on the spot plate. Now, add a drop or two, of ammonia test liquid. Any change to blue. Even the palest shade of blue indicates impurities, and another rinse is required. When the test runs clean, with no hint of color change, you can do a final rinse. This time, with a small amount of distilled water. This will wash away any minerals left behind by the tap water. To dry the gold mud, place the beaker on the hot plate, and turn it on. Any distilled water overlaying, and clinging to the gold mud, will evaporate, leaving a dry, brown, gold powder, that will pour out like sand. Melting. So now you have highly refined gold powder, and it looks like, well, it looks like dirt. To restore the beautiful, anisotropic gold color, you will need to melt the powder. Typically, melting is done by torch, so that is the method we will illustrate. Here is what you will need. Melting torch. Use a torch made for this purpose. The common propane torch simply will not provide enough BTUs to do the job. Crucible. You can use a standard clay graphite crucible, a ceramic cup shaped crucible, or you can use a burner ceramic crucible. Crucible rest. Any refractory material, like a brick or a cinder block for example, will do the job. Flux. Common fluxes that are typically used include borax, boric acid, or a combination of the two. Alcohol. Preparing your crucible. Select either an unused crucible, or one that has only been used to melt refined gold. When using a fresh crucible, you must first flux it, sealing its pores, thus preventing it from absorbing gold. Heat your crucible to red hot. Sprinkle flux on the inside of the crucible. A mixture of 50% borax and 50% boric acid, is the most commonly used flux. The flux will melt rapidly, forming a thin glaze and sealing the crucible's pores. Wrap your gold powder in jeweler's tissue paper. If that is not available, you can use a small section of a paper towel. Soak the wrapped gold powder in alcohol, and place it in your crucible. The paper and alcohol will help secure the powder, so that the air currents produced by the torch flame don't blow it away. Both paper and alcohol will burn away, leaving no trace. Melt your metal. When it flows like water, pour it into an ingot mold to make a bar of gold, or pour it into ice water to make shot. If you have any questions, regarding melting or any other part of the refining process, please feel free to contact Shaw. We will be happy to help you. Remember, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask.